Yo, people, what's up? It's your boy MM2K back again with a special video. This is an episode of The Spiel. This is where I go on my rants. This is my one take videos. We ain't doing no editing or none of that stuff. Um, just, uh, I, I got some appointments happening today unexpectedly. Um, and I had to come back home and grab some, some, some stuff. Um, and, uh, I got it. I got like 45 minutes to kill before I got to go back out. So we got, we got to make this, uh, very concise, but I wanted to take some time to get with you guys and talk about what's going on, uh, with the NPD drop or the Sakana drop this month. We've been normally doing these behind the scenes with our members first, and then we'll release them later. But today, because of the lack of content, we're going to make this um, available to all uh, day one. So that, that's awesome that you know, we're able to do that today. Okay, so here's what's going on. Uh, let me take you guys to the right screen. This is the tweet from Matt Piscatella of Sakana slash formerly known as MPD. And this is the Sakana uh, monthly highlights. And what happens here is he takes all of the data from North America that they get from the different retailers and stuff like that. And he tries to create a snapshot of who's doing what sales wise, you know, with physical, digital um, information where that information is provided and tries to give you um, a sense based upon that data, what the rankings are for games, hardware and accessories. So um, a lot of preliminary stuff I really don't get into. He, he says uh, 2024 gaming market highlights from Sakana projected total US spending on video game hardware content and accessories gained 4% in March uh, versus uh, year average, reaching 4.9 billion. Mobile content grew 15%, offsetting a 32% drop in hardware. Mobile source is Sensor Tower. All right, and he shows you the, the overall numbers here. Okay, so if we can go here, we, we tend to focus on the top ranked games and then what's the best hardware. I've seen the top ranked games, but I'm actually, this is an actual live reaction, so to speak, of what's the top hardware. I have no idea what the top, I can guess what the top hardware is. I'm gonna surmise that it's PlayStation for sales and dollars, but I could be wrong, we'll see. All right, so here goes to March, 2024, top 20 best-selling games premium games us so they base it off of how much money they made not copy sold but how much money they were made and physical and digital from digital sharing publishers um excludes add-on content so these are just the base game or not the base games. these are just the retail games not dlc um and uh just something to note here digital sales not included for those that have an asterisk next to them so that's usually the Nintendo games and the take two games. And then there's some other titles too that don't have uh, digital sales. Uh, so here we go. All right, so number one, no shock, um, Dragon's Dogma released in March and it was uh, the number one game in March as far as sales. And this is, and for those of you that are not aware, this is for North America. This is US, Canada, and uh, Mexico, all right? So I wanted to make that abundantly clear. This is not global, but US, Canada, and Mexico makes up the biggest region for console gaming. All right, just so you're aware of that. Okay, so when you see these numbers, that, that this actually details when it comes to console gaming and in a, in a large part, AAA gaming that's done on PC. So when it comes to PC, uh, AAA gaming, big ticket double a gaming and or piece uh, console gaming those games get the most saturation in north america when you look at regions all right so that's why the npd slash sakana reports are so important i remember when i was doing cloud coverage and i showed this to people in the cloud space and they laughed and they gawked and they were like oh this, this isn't global i'm like you don't understand this sets the tone globally for what's happening. Like you guys do, do your research before you jump off that hill. But yeah, do your research and you'll know why it's important, why NPD pretty much leads to pack. Next thing you, you have like GFK, I believe it is, and GSD over in Europe. I think the European region is, is second to North America when it comes again to console games and purchases and AAA and high ticket AA games on PC. All right, back to the list. Sorry for that rant. 
Dragon's Dogma 2, of course, number one for March. Helldivers 2 slid to the number two spot. This is just for the month of March. Um, MLB The Show, uh, which is um, a PlayStation published, I mean, developed game. And Helldivers is a PlayStation published game. I just want to make note of that. Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 3 is fourth. Rise of the Ronin, which is another PlayStation published game is fifth princess peach showtime is six that's kind of surprising because princess peach is a nintendo game and normally when a nintendo game launches it dominates um final fantasy 7 rebirth is right after under princess peach it went from number two to seven that's another playstation published game an exclusive title for playstation then we got wwe 2k 24 um hogwarts legacy madden 24 ea sports uh, FC, which is their football slash soccer game, whatever you call it. Um, Minecraft is uh, 13th. Horizon Forbidden West, Horizon 2 Forbidden West is actually at 14th. It went from 107 to 14. That's amazing. Um, we have Tekken 8 that dropped from 5 to 15. We got Rainbow Six Siege from Tom Clancy holding in the top 20 spot, went from 19 to 16. We got Elden Ring that dropped a few slots from 14 to 17. We got Mario Kart 8 that dropped, I mean, that went up. No, I'm sorry. It dropped from 17 to 18. We got Marvel Spider-Man 2 that dropped from 13 to 19. And again, that's another PlayStation um, uh, exclu PlayStation 5 exclusive and uh, PlayStation first party game. Horizon Forbidden West is a PlayStation 5 and PC game. I believe it is on. PC now. Yeah, it's on PC now. Um, so that's another PlayStation first party game. And rounding out the top 20 is Mortal Kombat 1. So for the month of March, we got uh, one, let's see here. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, five, six games that are either exclusive all the way around console exclusive or published and created by playstation so if you're wondering what where, why the hell where'd you get that thumbnail from that's where we got it from because and you'll see again this is not the only list that the playstation games will dominate when we're looking at the global lists games all right so speaking of that let's go to the next list that looks at for year to date 2024. So for the first three months of 2024, first three calendar months, these are not just a monthly snapshot, but a quarterly snapshot of who has the best performing games um, of 2024. As far as dollars are concerned, again, this is ranking everything by dollars. All right, so when you look at that, here are the games. Number one, Helldivers 2, PlayStation um, published console exclusive. We got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We got Dragon's Dogma 2 that comes in at number three in this first month. We got Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, which is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. It's only available on the PlayStation 5. We got MLB The Show, which is a PlayStation first party developed game, even though it's multi-plat, it's developed by PlayStation. So it's available on the PlayStation as well. Uh, we got uh, Tekken 8, Suicide Squad, dropping from five to seven. Then we got Madden number uh, 24, going from six to eight. We got Persona 3, dropping from seven to nine. We got Hogwarts Le Legacy, dropping Hogwarts Legacy, still holding strong, dropping from eight to 10. Um, we got uh, EA Sports FC 24 dropping from 10 to 11. We got Skull and Bones dropping from 9 to 12. We got Marvel Spider-Man dropping two slots. Again, another PlayStation 5 exclusive game. And it's also first party developed going from 11 to 13. We got Rise of the Ronin that debuts on this chart at 14. 14th on this year to date list. It's only been available for one month. It's only available on the PlayStation 5. 
and it debuts at 14th. That is kind of surprising. I'll get into that a little bit. Um, we got Super Mario Brothers Wonder that dropped from 14 to 15. Elden Ring that went from 15 to 16. We got Minecraft that actually went up one from 18 to 17. We got uh, Dragon, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth that dropped from 12 to 18. We got Last of Us Part Two, another PlayStation first party game. I, I it's it's console exclusive. I can't remember if this game is also on PC. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, I know part one is part two probably is two. And lastly, we got Mortal Kombat one rounding out the top 20. All right. This is amazing because again, we got one, two, three, um, four, five, six games again, that as far as publishers concern or platforms available on, they are in the top 20 for the quarter, right? And when you look at this, I mean, Sony games, when I we talk about games that are available on Sony because they've been created or published by Sony or games that are exclusive to the console, they dominate this list, right? They dominate this list as far as single sourced information, you know, single source games, PlayStation 5 games or PlayStation published games, they dominate this list. So when you look at games that you can look forward to definitively on your PlayStation 5, you, you, you got, I mean, come on now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like PlayStation 5 dominates this list. Uh, and it just tells you why owning a PlayStation 5 is essential. All right. So here goes the top ranked games as far as PlayStation 5 is concerned, as far as monthly active users. All right. Um, and I'm not quite sure how they track this data, but, uh, you know. This, I guess these are the most active, you know, the games with the most active players consistently throughout the month. Fortnite is number one. Call of Duty uh, HQ is number two. Grand Theft Auto 5 is number three. NBA 2K24 is number four. Uh, Hell Divers moved up a couple of slots from seven to five. Uh, Madden NFL 24 is number six. Roblox uh, is seven. Marvel Spider-Man is holding firm at eight. Sifu went from 151 to nine. And that is a PlayStation console exclusive, I believe at the time. And rounding out the top 10 is Minecraft. Uh, let's look at Xbox. Xbox is Fortnite, Call of Duty, Headquarters, HQ, Grand Theft Auto 5. So it's the same for both of those on, the, on both consoles. We got Roblox. Minecraft, Madden, NBA 2K24, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, Dead Island 2, and MLB The Show. So the, the ironic thing is both games that are multi-plat but are developed by the competing platform round out the top 10 for both consoles. For number So number 10 for Xbox is, is Minecraft, the number 10 for uh, MLB The Show. I mean, it number 10 for for Xbox is MLB the show. No oh, cool stuff. All right. So um one of the more interesting things that I see here is that for Xbox um outside of Minecraft I don't see um we don't see a lot of Xbox studio games. I mean, you see Call of Duty and you see Minecraft. Call of Duty's ABK, it's not really Xbox Studios. I know it's it's, it's all being headed by Matt, uh, Matt Booty, but you don't really, you know, you don't see the saturation of PlayStation games like you do here. I mean, you don't see the, the saturation of their own titles like you do here. Like we got Sifu, that, that, that's a console exclusive. We got Marvel Spider-Man. We got Hell's Divers 2, right? 
So, well, to be fair, you 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 might as well. It's it's you got three. Was that one, two, three? Yeah, you got three games that are console exclusive that are on um, PlayStation. To be fair to my, my well, to be fair to Microsoft, there are none of their console exclusive games up here. Wow. Okay. So I, w I was trying to be fair. <laughs> so when you look at exclusive titles, yeah, there, none, none of their exclusive games are there. Which, interesting. Not even Starfield. Okay. This is uh, monthly active users on Steam. So Steam is Helldivers 2, Counter-Strike 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Latro, Rainbow Six Seeds, Dragon's Dogma, Stardew Valley, Last of Posh, Rocket League, and Elden Ring. And it's, it's just crazy to see a PlayStation game top this list on Steam. PlayStation games normally don't dominate Steam like this. You'll see Xbox games do this from time to time. Uh, and then we're going through the top 10 best-selling premium games on PlayStation platforms. Um, I'm confused by this. Okay, no, this, okay, so this list is the best-selling. The other ones were the most played, most monthly active users. These are the best selling by platform. All right. So the best selling games on PlayStation by platform is MLB The Show, Helldivers 2, Dragon's Dogma 2, Rise of the Ronin, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, WWE 2K24, Madden, EA uh, Sports FC, and uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2 rounds out the top 10. This is the best-selling Xbox games. And then we have Dragon's Dogma 2. We have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We have uh, WWE 2K24. We have EA Sports, uh, Madden NFL, Hogwarts Legacy, Minecraft, Elden Ring, Rainbow Six, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And once again, even on the top sales list, you don't see any of the um you don't see any of the um exclusive uh, xbox console exclusive games now people may say but moss that's because of game pass i i get that but when we just looked at the top played i, I didn't see any of the exclusive games in the top played either so i'm not seeing strong support or the Xbox exclusive stuff. So keep keep that keep that in mind. This is not me trying to say, oh yeah, uh, the Xbox exclusive suck. I mean, you guys know my opinion on how I feel about the Xbox exclusives, but there's a bigger point in all this, all right? And then here goes the top selling Nintendo games, Princess Peach, Unicorn Overlord, Mario Kart 8, Super Mario Brother Wonder, Mario vs. Uh, Donkey Kong, Hogwarts Legacy, Super Smash Brothers, Minecraft, just Dance and Pokemon Scarlet. So now, some other interesting stuff. Helldivers 2 remains the best-selling premium game of 2024 year to date after placing second in March. Helldiver currently ranks seventh in lifetime US dollar sales for Sony. Published titles just after two months in the market. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth remained the fourth best-selling game of 2024 year to date despite falling five spots in the monthly rankings the 7th in March after placing second in February. So that means that its numbers in February were phenomenal. It's just, I think it got outplaced only by Helldivers, which is doing super phenomenal, right? Um, and then they talk about how it ranks. Like, so we're, we're, we're so only one month in the game, right? Now, let, let me look up something real quick. Um, when did... When did Final Fantasy VII Remake? So, hold on. So, with only two months in the market, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is already 14th. 
where for a, over uh, you know 48 months on the market or maybe 46 if we want to be exact to the uh Sakana reports at the time that they took this 47 months to be exact 47 months on the market final fantasy 2 final fantasy 7 remake sorry is second and with only two months in the market final fantasy 7 rebirth is 14th that's that that's crazy i would like to see that whole list of how they rank all right so let's try to get but but that's a, a crazy factor 40 you know wow um great great job to square enix for that and then i know there was a report about you know square enix looking to boil down on its 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 console games um look they got a hefty sum for final fantasy 7 uh rebirth from sony because sony supported it as a as a um as an exclusive um and so therefore it's it's outreach isn't going to be as great as a multi-plat but it's still pulling these numbers which i think is phenomenal i don't think the problem sort of the problem that square enix is dealing with is because of their relationship with sony um i think the problem just has to do with the entire catalog of square enix ip just not hitting now we do know forespoken did not reach expectations we do know that but outside of that i i i don't see a problem with their relationship um i see the biggest problem being that um their catalog just ain't hitting man it just ain't oh um, all right, let's go and let's look at uh, the hardware stuff. And here we go. PlayStation 5 led the hardware market in unit and dollar sales. I was right. I, I, I swear to goodness, I guessed that. I was right. Both March and the first quarter, Nintendo Switch once again finished second in unit sales. Uh, and while Xbox ranked in dollars. And the PlayStation Dual since Edge was the best-selling accessory in. Uh, so what does this mean to me? Here's what I think it means. I like to give it. Ain't right. Okay, wouldn't. That is so weird. Oh, you know what? I must have, what did I do here? Excuse me for a moment. Why is the full video? Why does that have internet? Let's fix this. I have to fix this mine. So weird. <laughs> I don't know why that was there. Okay. All right. So here's what this says to me. First and foremost, it says to me that PlayStation dominated this quarter. Um, we heard, and this is why I tell you guys to please be very careful on who you listen to and check their agenda. Um, we have a bias towards PlayStation, unforgivingly. We do when it comes to the console. But Cold Blood and I on this channel, we constantly give PlayStation Network. There's a variety of examples. We do it all the time. We don't cut any slack where slack should definitely not be cut. Um, when you have people that can't do that despite their biases, you have to be very careful. Late last year, we heard people say PlayStation needs a showcase. PlayStation needs a showcase because they don't have anything coming out for 2024. They're dry. They're dry. And as you can see, we looked at the Sakana report. They dominated the first quarter of 2024 easily. Like dominated it. And then they're starting off the, the second quarter well, where um Hell um, not Hellblade, um freaking um Stellar Blade is coming out. It has come out as of uh April. 
So they're starting off April with a bang. I, I, I'm, I'm, I would be remiss if Stellar Blade wasn't top three. That's over multiplats. I, I would be remiss. You know, would it be a failure? No. No, like if if Stellar Blade don't make top ten, you know, holy cow, then yeah, we might have an issue. But if Stellar Blade makes top, I, I'm I'm expecting it to make top three just off the vibes that I'm getting. But they're starting off April with a bang. Now, don't get me wrong. May is going to give you um, Hellblade 2. We'll see what that what, what that even means. But this is crazy how much they've dominated 2024. And when you were told that things were going were gonna to be so bone dry, that was because people were doing their fanboy stuff. So despite us not knowing, and I'm not saying that this first quarter 2024 um is all they need to do you know and and and, and they could just they could just ride to, you know just, just pump the brakes and and stop for the rest no i'm not no not at all it's too early for that crap but it, it they they've swatted down all the stupid narratives from 2023 and we don't even know what's coming for 2024 hopefully there's more this was a fantastic first quarter of 2020. Um, and place and, and my thing is, is that during these three months, if you did not have a PlayStation five, you were missing out on so much, so much. Like we show you here on the channel, definitely check us out on MM2K gaming streams. That's our streams channel where damn well, every PlayStation game got a spotlight. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, what you're going to want to do is we, if you don't have a PlayStation five, rethink that. I know you're hearing this stuff about your PlayStation's going day and day on PC. There is no evidence of that. That's just wishful thinking. And that's just a misconstrued set of words. Now, I believe you me. I don't say that it's not on the table. I'm not saying that I don't believe it's going to happen, but Hiroki Totoki makes me nervous about that. So I'm not saying that it's off the table, but there's no evidence of that. People are talking about it like it's just a matter of fact. I'm telling you, do not listen to these crumb bums that have an agenda. You're going to want to get you a PlayStation. You're missing out on so much. It's just absurd. The second thing that this O'Connor report tells me is that there is just more and more incentive for Xbox to abandon its whole exclusive thing. Like we see where exclusives are working for PlayStation. So don't, that's why I said that whole thing about them going day and date on PC, even though console exclusives would still, you know, be a dominant thing. I don't, I just don't expect that long-term Sony would see success um, going day and date on PC. They would see similar diminishing returns as Xbox has. That's why they would be hesitant to do that with all their titles. You know, I think first, I think games as a service titles, some maybe some double A titles, they would be looking to do that. I think the other, the majority of their triple A genre defining titles, you're gonna continue to see a, a significant gap between when they release on console versus when they release on PC, all right? So with that said, um, Xbox on the other hand, they, the the, the Sakana reports show no incentive for them to re remain and keep games exclusive. And you kind of see this in the, um, the message that they sent out where they were talking about their showcase in June. And then they got a blue heart and a green heart there, which blue, we know blue represents PlayStation and green represents Xbox. Now it's rumored that there is a call of duty showcase coming after the xbox showcase so that's what the blue and green is probably about probably not we don't know Let's see but there's really no incentive anymore like we don't see starfield we don't see starfield or any of these ex console exclusive games in the top played or the top purchased you can make an argument. Well, it's not in the top purchase because it's in Game Pass. Okay, where are they at in top played? They're not. And here, just you know, a couple of weeks ago, you had um, Sony 
um, within their Sony top 25 games in their game store, they had um, top 25 games in their game store. Seven of those top 25 games were Microsoft games. All the more incentive for Microsoft to just embrace multiplat and see success financially. Satya was was like a fat kid in a candy store <laughs> when, when, when that news dropped. He was so excited. So, I, in my opinion, the women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. Expect more of this from Xbox because you can clearly see there is no incentive for them to have these console exclusives. But it's the reciprocal for PlayStation. It's very beneficial for them because um, they've, they've welded it, you know, um, I don't wanna say flawlessly, but they've welded it in a very, very astute fashion with their business model and they're seeing a lot of success for it. So with that said, that is it for your boy. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, here's what I think, but if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to geeks, or not digital culture, cloud dosage, and yes here, MM2K Gaming. With that said, peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.